Good morning guys. If you get a chance in the next few days, try to take a look outside at Mars. We come pretty close every two years. That's the cycle that the two orbits kind of match up to each other. The closest we came in recent times was 2003, which was the closest we had been in 60,000 years. To understand this, we need to understand the cycle of an orbit. A cycle is something that repeats itself, that happens over and over again. An orbit is where one object is going around another. You might think of planets as orbiting the sun going around in circles, perfect circles every time they go around the sun. That's actually not what happens. We go through something called an ellipse. The orbit of a planet is governed mostly by the gravitational pull of the sun. The sun is the one thing in the solar system that has the most mass and therefore has the most gravity. Gravity depends on mass. The more mass you have, the more gravity you have. Nothing in the solar system has as much mass as the sun and therefore the sun has the most gravity in the solar system. But wait! Don't planets have mass too? Yes, planets have mass, so planets have gravity. And their mass pulls back on the sun. So while the sun's mass is pulling on a planet, the planet's mass is pulling back on the sun. And as the planets pass each other, one planet will tug on another planet and either slow it down or speed it up. And the total mass of the planets tugs back on the sun enough that the sun wobbles a little bit in its orbit because it is being pulled on by all of the masses of everything that's in the solar system. Jupiter is our largest planet and it has so much mass that it slows down and speeds up other planets as they pass by. All planets have eccentric orbits. That means that they are not orbiting in a perfect circle. Venus is pretty close to a perfect circle, but the most eccentric orbit is Mercury, which is much more closer to an ellipse. If you want to get into really elliptical orbits, we can talk about dwarf planets like Pluto or comets, which are very, very elliptical. Getting back to Earth and Mars. Because of the gravitational pull of the planets, they don't orbit in perfect circles, they orbit in ellipses, and those ellipses will change just a little bit every year, so they're not following exactly the same path that they followed from one year to the next. There's also the factor of different orbit times. While they're traveling around the sun, Earth takes 364 and one quarter days to go around the sun, that's what we call a year, but Mars takes 687 days to go around the sun. They travel at close to the same speed, but Mars has much further distance to travel than Earth does. The factors of different orbits is something that we have to take into account anytime we plan a mission to Mars. The question of how long would it take astronauts to go on a mission to Mars goes like this. At our closest approach, we're looking at probably about nine months from launch to landing to get the astronauts to Mars. Once you get to Mars, then Mars has already passed Earth by and is traveling on its own further out away from Mars, uh, from Earth, and so we're further away. So we're going to wait three or four months, maybe a little bit more, until it's a better time to leave the planet so that we're not traveling the most distance using our rocket fuel. Three or four months later, we launch again and we're coming back another nine month voyage. So all in all, you're looking at close to two years with the buildup and the travel time to get astronauts to the planet and back from the planet. Because 2020 is one of those closer, close approach years, yes, we launched a probe. So in July, we launched the probe Perseverance, which will be touching down on the planet Mars in February of 2021. So that's coming up in just a few months here, and we're going to be very excited to watch that happen. And I'm going to leave you some links, guys. Go ahead and check out these links, learn a little bit more about orbits and Mars. Have a great day.